How's it going you guys? Now welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a really awesome chicken pot pie. Now I know it's a little late in the season to be making something like this, but in all honesty, comfort food like this I can go for any day of the year. Now this certainly isn't going to be your grandmother's chicken pot pie recipe because for the crust and the topping, I'm actually going to use my buttermilk biscuit recipe. Now I am changing the recipe up just slightly by adding in some uh, different seasonings as well as some cheddar cheese, but the overall recipe and technique is going to remain the same. I will have a link down in the description below where you can find my original buttermilk biscuit recipe. Like I said, it's pretty much the same thing, so just follow it and it should get you by. And again, as the most important part of making biscuits is you want to make sure all of your ingredients are as cold as possible. Uh, so I'll take it right out of the fridge, mix it together. Sometimes if it's on a really hot day, I'll put it all back into the fridge. That way none of those beautiful chunks of butter melt because if they do melt, you're not going to get that puffiness of a truly awesome buttermilk biscuit. Now what's really great about my buttermilk biscuit recipe is you can make it fairly far in advance. Now I made this about four days before I actually made the chicken pot pie. And you'll see when I'm done making the actual dough and getting it all assembled and nicely kneaded, I'm going to wrap it up nice and tightly and then put it in the freezer until I'm ready to use it. And now this is what's truly great about a chicken pot pie recipe is that you don't have to make everything on the same day. In fact, if you do, you're probably going to hate making chicken pot pies. But if you do it one step at a time, maybe uh, today you do the dough and then a few days later you do the uh, prep work by cutting up all your vegetables and then the next day you actually make it, that's the best way and the most enjoyable way that I find to cook. So maybe if it just seems like too daunting, take it one step at a time. Freeze your ingredients and start back up when you can. And because I'm a man of my word, as you can see, I'm actually wrapping this up after I'm done making it because I'm not quite ready to make the chicken pot pie or finally assemble it so I'm gonna wrap it up nice and tightly and put it in a ziploc bag definitely make sure you're putting it in a ziploc bag you don't want this dough to dry out and after four days in the freezer it'll definitely dry out if it's not in a ziploc bag but now we're going to move on to the actual filling of this chicken pot pie which I think is just about the most important part obviously now preparation when it comes to a chicken pot pie is everything you want to make sure you have all of your vegetables diced up and ready to go chicken already pre shredded different types of seasonings already measured out creams and milks already measured out you just want to make sure you have everything ready to go because once you actually start the cooking process it does move pretty quickly and as always you'll be able to find the ingredient list and the amounts down in the description below and now this is where you can be really creative when it comes to your own chicken pot pie as you'll see I'm adding in a few different ingredients that aren't traditionally found in them just to kick up the spice a little bit but you can also change up your chicken pot pie by how you actually cut up your vegetables and what vegetables you even add into it uh, for my chicken pot pies I like to shred up the onions get a really nice fine dice on them I don't really want to taste chunks of onions in mine but I'd rather taste chunks of maybe carrots or even celery so I'll leave them a little bit thicker cut because I do strongly believe that there should always be a textural element to whatever food that you make you don't want everything to be in what you make to be just homogeneic and that you know it kind of all just turns into mush and it's all just one texture I want to have some crunchy bits I want to have some softer bits just something to change up the mouthfeel and now I'm going to achieve this by not only cutting the vegetables into differing sizes but I'm also going to change the order of operations in which I cook the vegetables all together if I want a vegetable to be a little bit more crunchy I'll add it in a bit later if I want it to be a bit softer I'll add it in sooner in the cooking process now something else I'll add into my chicken pot pies as well is not only potatoes but also sweet potatoes I feel like sweet potatoes give a really nice textural element as well as a uh, very nice kind of sweet sweeter element um, which I think goes really nice for any chicken pot pie and now I am going to dice these up on a little bit of the thicker side that's thick with only two C's just because um, I feel like potatoes especially if you cook them for a really long time in a chicken pot pie a lot of times they'll kind of just melt away into mush which is something I'm definitely not looking for I want them to hold on to their structure and now I am going to be using using low sodium chicken stock and the reason I'm using low sodium is just because I want to have a bit more control over the amount of salt that I'm putting into my own filling and you do want to use chicken stock because chicken stock is thicker than chicken broth and that's because chicken stock is made with chicken bones and when you make it with chicken bones a lot of times all of that good cartilage that good collagen will seep out into the actual chicken stock and that'll help us thicken up our filling later on 
And I know some of you might be calling this cheating, but I am just going to use a rotisserie chicken that I bought at my local supermarket. Um, I really feel like these taste pretty good, and I just don't feel like you need to really go out of your way and roast your own entire chicken just for a chicken pot pie. So here I am, I'm going to pre-shred it all, and I'm going to be using an entire rotisserie chicken because this is going to be a very large chicken pot pie. Because whenever you're making a recipe that's fairly involved like this, you wanna make a large amount of it, you know, that way you have leftovers. And I will say, a chicken pot pie is one of those things that the longer it sits in the fridge, the leftovers taste even better than when you first pull it out of the oven. And now in a very large saucepan, I'm gonna start sauteing our onions, celery, and carrots. And I'm also gonna throw in the garlic now because they do wanna cook down that super strong garlicky taste. Uh, that way it mellows it out and it, it isn't as harsh later on. But now that we've finished cooking down and sweating down our first batch of vegetables, I'm gonna add in some flour, give it a good mixing, wait until the flour cooks just a little bit, just till we start getting some nutty notes uh, coming off this mixture. And then we're gonna add in our chicken stock give it another good mixing now you're really gonna start to notice things are gonna thicken up here uh, now we're gonna add in our milk and heavy cream and now you can substitute out the heavy cream and just use all milk but I do think the heavy cream really adds a nice richness and uh, creaminess to the finished uh, filling and now we're finally gonna add in our potatoes and sweet potatoes notice I'm in adding them in towards the end just because again I want to preserve their structure I don't want it to cook down into mushy baby food but I'm also gonna add in our seasonings now some parsley a little bit of sage to get that kind of Thanksgiving-y, really hearty, uh, comfort food vibe. And as you can see, it's starting to really thicken up now. I'm keeping the heat at about medium while I add in our shredded chicken, um, giving it a good mixing. And now this is where you kind of cook it down and thicken it up to as much as you want. You could definitely stop now and keep it kind of uh, soupy, but I like a really thick filling. And now I'm gonna add in our frozen peas at the very end because pro tip, if you add them in too soon, they're gonna turn brown in the filling and you don't really want that. But I'm also gonna add in our chilies and adobo. And I'm really not adding this in for any type of spice value. I'm really adding it in to get that really smoky chipotle flavor and I think it goes really good in this. And now as you can see I'm going to salt the fuck out of this because we haven't really been using too much salt up until this point and we are using low sodium chicken stock and there is a lot here to season so we're definitely going to add a good amount of salt in here at the end. And now we're going to take it off and let it cool down while we get our crust and topping ready. And the reason you want it to cool down completely up to at least room temperature before you throw it in is because again this is a biscuit dough and in order to get that really fluffy crust and really fluffy top you don't want the butter in this to melt so that's why the filling has to be cold when you uh, finally assemble it all and now again this is another one of those points where you can stop take a break and pick back up the next day just uh, make sure you cover up that filling nicely and put it in your fridge uh, and it should be good for about a day or two but here I am going to make it all on the same day so I'm gonna put it in the fridge let it get a jump start on cooling down while I finish up prepping this biscuit dough to become our crust and topping for our chicken pot pie and this is the same dough that I started prepping four days ago that I just pulled out of the freezer I did let it warm up slightly, but again, you don't want it to let it warm up too, too much just because And as you can see, I am still doing the lamination technique that I do in my regular buttermilk biscuit recipe, which again, I'll have linked down in the description. And this is also to ensure a super flaky and super puffed up final product in the end. And now this recipe is designed to yield you enough biscuit dough to make a top and bottom crust. Of course, I've seen recipes where people just use a top crust when it comes to their chicken pot pie. And you can do that. You can just split this recipe in half. But I do insist you make the bottom crust because it does come out really, really good. And in all honesty, if if you do make this chicken pot pie, I can almost guarantee you that you'll make it again just for the crust. But either way, here I am rolling out the bottom crust, and now I am going to roll it out pretty thin. Of course, I'm going to be flouring along the way, but before I do throw the bottom crust in, I am going to butter it very liberally because you want a lot of butter in there, not only because it'll fry the crust a little bit, which is always a good thing, but it'll make it all nonstick and much easier to serve in the end. But after I'm done laying it in our dish, I'm going to put it in the fridge, of course, covering it with plastic wrap so it doesn't dry out, but also so our biscuit dough stays nice and cold. And while everything is chilling down in the fridge, I'm gonna cut out our biscuit topping here. And you do wanna save every last bit of biscuit dough, just in case you never know you might need it in the future. And speaking of that, as you can see, when I laid the bottom dough in, it didn't really uh, go in as gracefully as I thought it would so I needed to graft on a few extra pieces which is all good because now I'm going to put in the filling here make sure it's all spread out smooth and press down nicely filling every void and now I'm going to gently lay on our biscuit topping and I'm going to preheat our oven here to about 450 degrees you want to put this in really hot at least for that first 20 minutes because it's that shock of heat that's going to get our biscuits to puff up real nice and I'm also going to brush them down with a bit of egg wash that way they turn all nice golden brown but after that first 20 minutes I'm going to drop 
drop the oven temperature down to 350 and let it just coast there for 30 minutes taking it out and letting it cool for another at least 15 to 20 minutes because you do really want this to cool down a lot otherwise if you scoop into it and pull it out it'll come out super soupy and it will fall all over the place but as you can clearly see food presentation is definitely not a skill that I possess but I promise the flavors and textures of this recipe are absolutely amazing and I do 100% hope you guys give this one a try thanks again so much for watching and feel free to comment down below if there's any techniques you think I might have overlooked with this one recipe or if you want to see a certain recipe in the future Either way, thanks again so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram for a behind the scenes look at my recipe development process, and I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.